Welcome to the demonstration on cloud native storage. In this particular example, we are going to show a three node Kubernetes cluster that supports the new CSI driver from VMware. This is all running vSphere 6.7 U3 and the underlying storage is vSAN also running 6.7 U3. This particular example, what we're going to do is we're going to deploy a three node Cassandra cluster and we're going to look at how CNS, cloud native storage, bubbles that up in the vSphere UI. So let's go to our CLI and let's have a look at the nodes. And there you can see that it's the same three nodes that we saw in the vSphere UI. So in this particular case, I have already created a namespace for Cassandra. You can see it there. But if I look for pods in that namespace, like so if I look for persistent volume claims, you can see there's none there and similarly if I look for persistent volumes and there are none associated with uh, Cassandra at this point in time. So I do have uh, some uh, manifest files already created for Cassandra. Uh, one thing I have created in advance is the Cassandra service that's already running. You can see it there and I already have a, a storage class for Cassandra as well. So you can see it is the storage class using the new CSI driver from VMware. Great, so very quickly, if I have a look at the stateful set that I'm about to deploy, um, just various information there, number of replicas, and a lot of uh, environment variables and so on associated with that as well. So the whole idea is when I roll this out, I will have a three node um, Cassandra uh, database running in a stateful set. So let's kick that off. So, and I can keep an eye on the STS stateful set, like so. And you can obviously see that there's a bunch of um, activity taking place here as it builds out the um, container volumes, which are essentially first class disks on vSphere or virtual disks on vSphere. So that will take a little bit of time. Um, we can have a look at the PVCs as they get created. You can see the first one is there. We should have our PV as well. So we'll just pause that for a moment and allow those to start up. Okay, let's see how things have progressed now with that brief pause. And uh, we can see we have our second persistent volume created. And uh, if we have a look at the pods as well, or the stateful set, we can see our first pod is up. Um, and we can look at the pods in more detail as well. There we go. So second one is on its way. One thing that I should have showed you uh, at the very beginning is um, a bit more information about the storage class that we used. And this is the storage class that we built. And what you'll see here is that storage policy name, one of the parameters in the storage class is set to space efficient. Now space efficient is a policy, a storage policy associated with the vSAN data store. So what you can see here is through storage classes, we can actually stipulate which policy or which class of storage that we wish to consume um, when we're building our persistent volumes. So now at this point, let's have one more look at our pods. Ah, the third one is on its way up. So we'll look at our persistent volume claims. And the third one is pending as well. And you probably noticed the tasks just there on the left-hand side, they should start filling in in a moment. And if we look at our persistent volumes, yeah, that's there now as well. So we're almost there, it's almost up and running. And we'll just do a slight pause once more while we wait for that. And now if we have a look at our stateful set, after that brief pause, almost there. Let's have a look at the pods once again. Almost there as well. It's another few seconds, I should think. And once more, yay, we're up and running. So just check the stateful set as well. Excellent. So one of the really nice things that we now have in vSphere is the ability to visualize how these Kubernetes persistent volumes are consuming um, our resources on vSphere. So if we just take a look at a cluster view here and under monitor, there is a new view under cloud native storage 
and it's selected which is the container volumes and what you have here are the three persistent volumes that back or Cassandra deployment and so I can see some more information here as well if I select all the columns you can see there and uh, being deployed on the vSAN data store. You can see that the storage policy is one of the parameters that we just looked at in our storage class, which is space efficient, and that is the policy that's been consumed. You can see the policy is compliant. You can see which cluster it's on and so on and so forth. And you're gonna get a bit more detail here um, by selecting uh, that particular um, object within the view. So you can flip between basics overview. You can uh, see some more details about the persistent volume and the persistent volume claim, the name of the persistent volume claim there, which namespace it's in, all of that good stuff. The other thing that's really nice is because this has been deployed on the vSAN data store, I can actually look at the layout of this particular persistent volume. So if I select this persistent volume, this will take me into the virtual objects view and it will actually show me, it just popped down there, it should actually show me the persistent volume and where it is. It's attached to Kubernetes Worker 1. You can see it's space efficient again. And because that's now been selected for us, we can actually view the placement details as well, giving us the breakdown of object and components for that particular persistent volume or VMDK. And you can see the um, because it's a RAID 1, it has a witness and two mirrored components, and you can see which hosts the different components have been placed on, and you can see which devices are being used as well. So that's really useful. So let's just pop back one, once more now, and we'll also take a look at, hey, let me just select all those once more. Let's also take a look at the policy. So if I click on the policy, I'm taken into the policy section and I can see the breakout of the space efficient policy and all the settings that go with that. So pretty good, pretty cool. Um, and sure now you can appreciate how useful that is for a vSphere administrator and maybe a Kubernetes admin or SRE or DevOps persona to have that intelligent conversation between how storage is being consumed in Kubernetes and how that maps to storage being consumed in vSphere. Great, that concludes the demonstration. Thank you for watching.